And Sclater in the escort. Lights are on and they are off already. Very quick uh, light sequence there as they roar away again. Lynn Devlin bogs down a little bit on the run towards turn number one. She did that yesterday and lost more positions. She only lost, lost the one there in that one. Charlie Viola has made a great start. And uh, the escort of Sclater is falling backwards at a rapid rate to not see her. The 27 I think it started off with some sort of issue and somebody spun on her ties. That was Viola. I was just saying what a great start he's made. But he's kind of looped it down there at turn number three. Evasive action from everyone. Yeah, luckily everybody got through very clean there and steve has managed to sneak up some more cars making a cracking recovery from yesterday's unfortunate DNF. Steve Howard up to as well inside the top five, I believe. Oh, yeah, he's just he's outside the top five. So making quick work of the field today. They yeah, already got through half of the field and now on the back of the slightly slow starting uh, Sclater there. Maybe it's just bogged down on the line because it seems all right now. Yeah, it could very well be. Remember in this field we've got a mix of cars on sticks and, and uh, r spec or treaded tyres. So you'll see Linda probably a little bit uh, tentative through turn one as opposed to Matt Bunners who's on the Yokohama AO8. AD09, uh, so that that tyre comes on a lot quicker than, than a slick wood. Uh, and, and a cracking start from Butters too to challenge the second place in the race. No, it's definitely it's got something wrong. Definitely, definitely slowing right. down a little bit there, but it is hard to tell next to Steve O's car. Which True. Is a serious straight line bump though. So Steve O displaces another car and he's on his march back to the front of the field. His next car will be lead up. So Harris leads the opening lap from uh, Devlin, Butters in third, but look at that, the power from Steve-O up the inside into turn number one, a great move up the inside of Lee Nuttall. So that is position 12 to position number four in uh, 12 corners uh, of the first lap and uh, the pit straight and a little bit of extra meters down towards turn number one. Effectively, about 3.2 kilometres there. He's moved up as eight we, positions. As we see on the screen here, uh, Ben Moore and Sharon Stickovic, followed closely by, by the photon. These two actually had a bit of a coming together yesterday during their big dice, and both of them suffered some wheel damage, uh, easily fixed on both cars, but uh, another interesting story from the pits. Yeah, very, very good. Here we are. This is the battle that we saw throughout uh, the racing yesterday between Harris and Devlin. And we said that uh, Howard won all the races prior to the start of this round. And uh, Devlin uh, won both yesterday in the mini. She's in uh, mighty form so far this weekend. But again, as he did yesterday, Harris has taken the lead at the start of this race. Can he keep Linda behind this time? That is gonna be the question. These two achieve their speed in such different ways. We'll see how good the Mini is under brakes compared to the Nissan Bluebird as they head down the pit straight. Is she gonna have a look down at turn number one? I think she's close enough, you know. She is late under brakes, straight up the inside. Made that look easy. Definitely, definitely. Nice move under brakes there. That's great awareness from, from Jimbo to know that she's probably gonna come through. These two will probably feed off each other and continue to put a gap on the rest of the field as Stevo continues to, to hunt through on the chase. Absolutely. Uh, a great calendar this year for two litre sports sedans. Uh, you visited Phillip Island, you've already visited Calder, you ran on the club circuit, the shorter layout of the uh, the Winton course here a couple of months ago as well. Uh, next up you've got uh, Calder and then Phillip Island to finish. It's a Great diverse calendar, isn't it? 100%, especially here running the short track versus the long track. We've already seen how different some of the cars make their time, and you'll find that some cars perform well above their weight on the short track, and then when we get you know, a couple more straights added to, to Winton, you'll, you know, the, the strengths and weaknesses play out. So it gives us a great diversity over the year for, for the different cars to show their strengths and weaknesses. Yeah, it certainly does, certainly does. And, you know, you spoke about the uh, variety of the cars. You know, some have got the uh, the space frame chassis, others have got the uh, the floor pan. And uh, that, that, you know, that sort of style of racing really does produce great Yeah, it's, it's really a category that can cater to your budget. You can make it as expensive as you like. You can have a space frame car, or you can have something similar to what we see on the screen here in Lauren Talbot Civic, where it's essentially a, a road car chassis with a, with a 
very good cage and some bolt up hard. A lot of hard work there from Travis to, to build that car. And it's slowly coming to show its potential. Uh, new car at the start of this year and Lauren drives it very well. Yes, yeah, certainly, uh, certainly does, and it's uh, immaculately uh, presented as well. And she's got a good run out of the corner. Is she going to be close enough to make the move on Slayton? No, not on this particular occasion. She's up to sixth, made the move on Nuttall last time through. So this the fight for a top five position in this race. But a, a great job so far from Butters. We spoke about him yesterday in the Pulsar in third position. Yeah, definitely one of the le lesser modified cars in the field running in the APRA spec. It's uh, an APRA control suspension with very limited engine modifications. And uh, Butters certainly showing how good you can go with, uh, with one of the lesser budget cars. Absolutely. Here they go into turns seven, eight underneath the gum tree and turn number nine. Such a historical circuit went and been open now for well over 60 years, one of the oldest circuits in this country. So much history, so many uh, famous moments have happened here over the years and it's great that it's still being used as much as ever. For sure, for sure. And, uh, as you see Steve Howard taking third place from Matt Butters down the back straight there. See if maybe Steve-O's got anything for the for our leaders. Uh, he's definitely lapping pretty quickly, so there's still three laps to go. I'm not sure he's going to bridge that gap, but it's definitely a great recovery drive. It'd be nice if you, if, if all of us had bad weekends and could still score a podium, that's for sure. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you say, uh, speaking of uh, yourself, you're not out there this weekend. It's really a bad weekend for you because you're stuck in here in the commentary box with me. So uh, you're usually a regular and a front runner in the Pulsars. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, usually out there having some fun, but uh, decided after a bit of a failure earlier this year to take a couple of rounds off and reevaluate uh, the car and, and how we're going to attack next year. So we'll be back in the last round for a while. For now, just enjoying the show. These guys are pretty good. Yeah, oh, but speaking of show, the way Butters commits to that turn, that's absolutely awesome, using all the kerb on the inside. He must know he's on the Blendline TV screens or something. He's giving it 110%. Howard might have got through, but he's not letting him out of his sight, so that was fully committed. Look at that. Sideways, uh, helping to rotate the car, cocking up the, uh, the inside rear wheel as well, and he is giving it everything to keep up with the Lightning Locksmiths Toyota Corolla that has blasted past him on this particular lap. Lights are on. Uh, that's always the uh, the signature trying to apply pressure. Does it work? Does turning your headlights on really distract the car in front? Uh, I don't think it distracts the guy in front, but I feel like it flicks a switch inside you and you sort of your lights are on, you're a bit more intense, but uh, definitely Bud has put on a great show for all the all the people out there with these people slide and lifting wheels up and I suppose if you can't make the podium you've got to make the highlights real. <laughs> He's doing that. He is definitely doing that in this race. And uh, out front Devlin another fastest lap of the race last time through and uh, actually 1.2 seconds ahead of Harris that time through. Double the margin from 1.2 out now to 2.4 seconds. So that's the first lap really that Harris has uh, been a few seconds or a few, uh, just over a second away from the time of Devlin as there's a little bit of a lockup down there for Sclater into turn number one. There's the recovering Charlie Viola in the picture partners, Nissan Pulsar. This, uh, this car very much improved and uh, has been tuned. It's not the uh, a standard Pulsar that's competing in the Pulsar Championship. Definitely, I think it's got some cams and some slightly different tyres and maybe some suspension work done to it that, uh, that we don't see in the rest of the Pulsars in the field. But awesome recovery drive there from Charlie Viola. Into turn three backwards at the start of this race and is almost back up to his sparring partner, Lee Nuttle. Absolutely, and uh, it was great that everybody uh, took evasive action and avoided him because he couldn't have been in a much more awkward position. But uh, battle has resumed between these two once again. Sharon Stipkovic and Moore in the Pulsar just behind. They have they've hardly been uh, more than about 10 metres apart all weekend long. They've been joined at the hip. Definitely. And we're seeing it once again in this one. Yesterday they got even closer. They had a little bit of a touch. Right hand, uh, left hand front wheel of, of Ben Moore to the right hand rear wheel of Sharon, I believe. And 
Sharon actually finished the race with no air in the left rear tyre. Oh, uh, right. Took the valve off the wheel and she said it sounded, felt a bit funny, but luckily the, the back of that car is quite nice and, and it's a, a right hand corner dominant track, so it didn't really affect her too much. Yeah, that's, uh, that's good news then, that she was able to uh, make it to the finish and uh, she's ahead of Moore at the moment. They're fighting for ninth position. They're ahead of Lambrick in the Proton and the number 97, the Toyota Starlet, that's had quite a few mechanical uh, issues in Gremlins this weekend. Definitely, those guys have been working very hard to, to rectify each fault as it pops up on that car. It seems to have been a, a never-ending sort of snowball, but uh, it's good to see it out there so you can have completed laps. Absolutely, uh, nothing like completing laps uh, out there. On any race circuit, it's about 27 seconds behind the uh, Proton, or 20 seconds behind the Proton of uh, Lambrick out there on the race circuit. Devlin continues to extend that margin by about a second a lap at the moment. We're now on the penultimate lap of the race. This one has flown by, but there's plenty more action to come. Uh, up next, we have the uh, big loud stock cars out there on the racetrack. Old NAS cars and old Oz cars from back in the day that used to race at the Thunderdome, uh, where you'll be headed for the next round. Definitely, you couldn't ask for two more di different categories to follow each other on track, and then when you throw some super trucks in there, this weekend's got a little bit of something for absolutely everybody. And of course, the uh, picture partners at Winton 300 as well. The, uh, the main event, you could say, this weekend so that will conclude proceedings this afternoon, the 300 kilometre endurance race. But yeah, as you say, there is something for absolutely everybody. I was talking to uh, Stephen White, the CEO of the Benella Auto Club, and he was saying exactly that. There really is something for everybody this week. For sure, for sure. And of course, in signature Winton Wakefield Sydney 300 weekend, it's either slating with rain or very warm. <laughs> it's, uh, it's definitely turned on the weather this weekend, that's for sure. Couldn't have wished for better weather, could we? Quite right. well, I got burns on Friday, can't quite believe that. But anyway, uh, Linda Devlin is coming to the line. She's continued to pull away. Four and a half seconds now. The margin ahead of Harris in the Bluebird. She's entering the final couple of corners. It's been a uh, great weekend for her so far. She's looking to make it three from three. The question is, can she go four from four? We're going to find out later on this afternoon. But it's race victory number three for Linda Devlin. Great victory from her in the John Cooper Works Mini ahead of the Nissan Bluebird of Harris. And here we are, the two Pulsars, the very different Pulsars. Nottel and Viola fighting hard, scrapping away for position number seven. Not all's going to defend down here at 10, surely. No, pulls back to the outside. Looks like that's got a bit more straight line speed. Probably just a little bit of straight line speed out of Lee's car and, and probably more quarter into the older car. That to take a hard fought fourth with a hard charging or oh, Talbot. No. Just getting him at the line. She got him. Stole it. Remarkable. I thought just like you, I thought <laughs> he had it sewn up, but no. But it's not over for sixth place. Uh, seventh place. Charlie Viola all over the back of Lee Rattle, and I think that's Lee up again. That's three for three for Lee, but I'm sure that'll come to head in the last race that we see today. Absolutely. Great race once again from the two leader sports sedans action up and down the field in that one. Good race for the lead at the midway stage, but uh, Linda really did pull away late on in that one. Stipkovic, Sharon, Sh Sharon Stipkovic did end up beating more home to the line and then the uh, final car to cross the line is the Proton Satria of uh, Lambrick who last year competed in the Winton 300 but this year uh, moving into two leader sports sedans and coming across the line in position number 11. So uh, results in the end there, Devlin ahead of Harris, Howard in third, good recovery from him. Uh, Talbot beat Butters by six hundredths of a second in the fight for position number four. She stole it at the line, but Butters wins the Pulsar class, so he'll be pleased about that. It's Slater, Nuttall, Viola, Stipkovic, Moore, and Chapman. Uh, thank you very much.
Declan, for joining me in that one. No worries at all. One more to go later today. A champion on multiple occasions since. Here we go. Revs are rising. Linda Devlin in the mini. Harris alongside in the Bluebird. Listen to those engines roar away. It's Howard, though, with the best start. He's jumped the boat. He's absolutely great. Them down to turn number one. What a start from the reigning champion in the Toyota Corolla. And you know what? Harris is going to take it to Linda as well. She's got a nice run out of two. She just about holds on. But once again, uh, Linda has uh, got a challenge on her head. She has not led at any point this weekend into turn one on lap one. She's had to do it the hard way. Yeah, Linda definitely getting a slightly better start than we've seen all weekend. Still not quite enough to to jump on Steve-O, who got a ripper of a start. As you see the battle for, for fourth place here between Lauren Talbot and Matt Butters. Uh, an Aprospect car versus a two-liter sports sedan. This will be very interesting. Matt very quick on the first lap as he throws it down the inside in the top sequence. But I think he's got that route. Charlie Biola sitting behind Lauren now, probably eyeing off a, off a move very quickly as well. We saw Viola make a lightning start in the previous race, but spun sadly at turn number three, but uh, no issues at that corner this time by. And he's moved his way right up the pointy end. Oh, Linda. Linda Devlin, I can see on uh, the timing screen in front of us, has been handed a five-second penalty. So uh, the stewards uh, judging that she either was rolling at the start or uh, was out of her grid box, but either way, uh, that is not good for Linda Devlin. She's going to have to, uh, if she takes the lead, pull out five seconds on those behind. That's not what she wanted. She wants to take a clean sweep this weekend. She's made life more difficult for herself now, that's for sure. Oh, around goes Sclater in the escort. Uh, pretty much a full 360 there. But uh, on cold tyres, a little bit too much power. And around went the machine. Down towards turn number one. Butters pulling away from Lauren Talbot, who's coming under pressure now from Charlie Viola. And once again, Sharon Stipkovic and Moore fighting away behind. They have been absolutely glued together. It's been absolutely remarkable, uh, those two uh, spending uh, so much time together on the racetrack. And, uh, I'm sure they are enjoying every single second of it, that is for sure, as Howard is coming under pressure from Devlin. She's got to make these smooth quick. She needs to pull out that five-second margin. And uh, Howard is going to try and defend that as much as he possibly can. Yet to take a win this weekend. He wants to change that right here, right now. Definitely Steve Howard there can make that K30 quite wide. As we see Linda applying some pressure. The attempts are up a bit, so we'll see how the front wheel drive mini goes, keeping its front tyres intact. Uh, of course, the front wheels doing not just the turning, but also the driving. So Linda will be looking to get out of that dirty air behind Steve as quickly as possible and, and go on to hopefully a, f a five plus second lead to, to seal the win. We sort of touched on it, but uh, the uh, two litre sports stands. Also uh, race alongside the, the Pulsar Association. Yeah, so we, uh, we run a subclass, sub if you like, uh, with the Winmax Australian Pulsar Racing Association. They're a controlled, controlled spec type category, similar to what you find in the XLs, maybe with a little bit sort of less modification. Um, the engines are pretty much a standard engine rebuilt to within a certain spec, and uh, the diffs are controlled, the suspension, the springs, all controlled, and we run a Yokohama tyre. Yeah. Uh, you're normally uh, in that field fighting against the men on the screen, Butters, but uh, sadly you're alongside me for this one. Oh, Butters, he does this all the time, doesn't he? He doesn't push 99%, it's 100%, 100% of the time. Uh, maybe close to 110 sometimes. Yes, but, uh, yes. <laughs> you see, the, you'll find, especially in the earlier laps, the, the front wheel drives will be a little bit more taily. That sort of relieves a bit of the stress on the front tyres. So, of course, if the rear slides around the front, it's not working as hard to turn the corner. As the race goes on, the balance will come back as the rear tire tips come up. But, uh, yeah, the sort of the looser it is in the start of the race, the better it is at the end of the race. Yeah, OK. Uh, that does make sense. Tyres and uh, understeer and front-wheel drives, they're going to be talking points when the uh, Winton 300 uh, comes out. The Pitcher Partners Winton 300 in a uh, few 
hours time. That's the headline act at the end of the day, the 300 kilometer endurance race. There will be a couple of pulsars in that, a couple of XLs as well. And there's already talk that with these bizarre, insanely nice, gorgeous weather conditions here uh, in the middle of winter, it is apparently, that's what I've been told, but uh, Winton says otherwise. Um, but yeah, we expect uh, that tyres could be a talking point in that race. Here comes Lauren Talbot. She's got great straight line speed and she just about overtakes Butters as they go into turn number one. They had a photo finish across the line in they the last did, race. Separated by six hundredths of a second at the line. Looks like Lauren's got the job done a bit early in this race. And she can release the shackles off that Civic and we can see just how quick it can be. I'm sure Butters will have something to say about that though. He's aggressive, we know that, we've seen that already today. And he's applying the pressure. Speaking of applying the pressure, Linda is doing the exact same to Howard. Oh, she's got a lovely run out of turn number seven. But that's a long way around the gum tree. So she slots back in behind. If she can do the same though, out of turn number nine right here. She might be able to slingshot alongside before turn 11, but nowhere near uh, able to do that there. Look at the straight line speed of Howard compared to uh, Linda Devlin. There's certainly uh, a few tents to be gained there. Or oh, mistake, a mistake from Howard. But yeah, the straight line speed is quite something in that Corolla. Definitely, though, especially the configuration of the car is very different. So Steve is running a 3SG Beams, two liter NA engine. Uh, and Linda's running a X Mini Challenge spec uh, John Cooper Works Mini. So okay. it's turbocharged, running a, a restricted turbo. So it doesn't quite have the rev range of a, of a normal turbocharged car. And you can see that in a straight line, it's a bit hampered, but definitely makes up for the corners and down the brakes. As you see a real Stevo in into turn one, and they continue to fight for the rest of the lap. I didn't know it was an actual uh, Mini Challenge car from uh, back in the day, but uh, that's, uh, that's really cool. Uh, to see that machine out there, of course, back in the day, uh, Grant Denyer, Chris Alajajan, uh, Paul Stokel, there's many uh, good names in that series. Uh, over a decade ago now that that series uh, was running around nationally uh, around this country, but uh, really cool to see one of those back out there and taking the fight to the Toyota Corolla. Looking left, looking right, he's going to dive to the inside. Oh, she, sorry. He's going <laughs> to dive to the inside. Uh, Linda doing a uh, magnificent job applying the pressure. At the moment, though, the five-second penalty is going to drop her behind Harris. Uh, so third position for Linda Devlin is on the cards at the moment, unless she can get past the Toyota Corolla. The problem is, as soon as she gets to a straight, she just finds herself too far back. She's much stronger under brakes. Look, she closes in every single time, but then they get to a straight again, and look, the number 13 Corolla pulls ahead once more. Definitely, instead of running a sequential gearbox, all he has to do is just pluck that gear lever and just drive away down the straight. Uh, but uh, Linda definitely putting the pressure on Stevo, and we'll see how Stevo goes holding it out for the next four laps. As you see, a big battle starting here between Charlie Viola and Matt Butters for fifth place. Yeah, two pulsars, they might look similar, but they are very much not. Um, the first one is a standard pulsar. Charlie uh, Viola's machine has been uh, very much tuned up. The, uh, yeah, uh, Charlie also taking the advantage, uh, the opportunity this weekend to get some extra laps ahead of the Winton 300. Uh, he's definitely gotten faster as the weekend's gone on, so he was yesterday definitely battling with uh, Lee Nuttall, who's currently in seventh place, and at the moment he's moved up to the next pulsar, which is Matt Butters. Yeah, well said, uh, absolutely. Never been to uh, Winton before, and uh, said to me on uh, Friday, I think it was, no, it was yesterday uh, afternoon, actually, said to me, um, I just want to get uh, extra miles. Oh, no, Linda. Linda has gone around. Oh, and, and Howard as well. What has happened down there at turn number seven? Have they come together? It appears they may have because they were both off the road. And uh, now Devlin finds herself trying to hold off. Yeah, definitely being contact down there. Yeah, Steve at was turn a very seven. heavily damaged left hand front wheel there. I believe that tyre's gone down too, so that might just be another DNF for Steve O. Unfortunately, these guys have all been racing very closely all weekend. And uh, sometimes two cars go for the one bit of real estate. Here we are. This is a replay of what has happened. So Howard's on the inside line. 
And oh, dear, oh, dear, he made that's a real odd one, that one. So Linda's gone around the outside of Howard rather than trying to come to the inside. And they've both found the same piece of tarmac. So it looks to me like Howard was going slightly uh, to the left, the more natural racing line. And uh, Linda was already there and she was already turning into the apex of the corner. And they've just sort of met in the middle, a bizarre uh, collision there. But now the Bluebird's taking advantage. Through goes Harris. I think Linda might be nursing a little bit of damage in that mini. And that has allowed Harris into the race lead. This race is absolutely twisted on its head. It's taken a real turn. Uh, what's your read on uh, what you saw in the replay there? I think maybe Steve got a little bit caught un unawares by how just how quick that mini is under brakes. And uh, we we'll have to see another replay. But uh, yeah, I think Linda's just uh, definitely got some more speed under under the, under brakes. And Steve didn't quite know she was there. Yeah, she was well past, wasn't it? It was her rear left that's uh, made contact, sorry, rear right that's made contact with the front left of Howard. So as you say, she was nearly all the way around the outside. And I, I don't think uh, he thought she was there. I think uh, he expected a move to the inside, which she was already covering. And uh, no, she had bolted around the outside. So very strange coming together, that one. Now, I can't recall seeing too many incidents like that at that corner. But anyway, the uh, real benefactor is the number 14, Nissan Bluebird of Harris, who's taken up the running at the head of this field. It's a credit to Jimbo, who's uh, relatively new in our category and does a lot of that work himself on that car and has been sneaking up on it and getting it faster. As you see, a three-way battle here now between the escort of Slater, Ben Moore, and of course, Sharon Stipkovic, never too far away from the Pulsar. <laughs> Again, side by side. I mean, there's probably about 15 minutes of blend line footage of these two <laughs> running side by side this weekend. Stipkovi comes back through again on the inside of more brilliant battling between these two. And I'm sure it'll continue uh, as uh, the leader now is on the final lap. These guys have got about a lap and a half to go. But I'm sure that fight will continue for the remaining four and a half kilometres. But at the moment, it's uh, Stipkovi who's leading. Oh, Linda's just gone past the commentary box window smoking there's smoke pluming from the uh, rear right of that uh, mini I'm not sure if she's got a deflated right rear tire here's a replay it is the uh, oh, oh, that not wheel's turning. not even turning so i'd say that's damaged the the rear hub there and uh hopefully linda can limp it home and, and get some points but it's there's still one lap to go after this one so We'll just see how Linda goes. This is a disaster. This is an absolute disaster because the cars behind are catching and they will catch and overtake her by the end of this race. Her round victory is slipping through her fingers on the final lap of the race. Drama, late round drama for Linda Devlin. Her closest rival in the round, Harris, is down the road. And there goes Butters. Oh, there goes Viola. <laughs> That's incredible. She's lost three places already in the first half of this lap. And she's probably going to lose more as well. Nuttall's not too far behind. Sclater's not too far behind either. This is going to go right down to the wire. Harris has done all he can. He's going to take his first race victory of the season and we await to see if it's going to be the round victory because Linda has lost another place out there on the racetrack. She is falling through the field like a knife through butter at the moment. This is such a shame, a disaster for her. But out the final couple of corners, the Pulsar fight continues. Butters will take the class victory in the Pulsars and beat home the improved Pulsar driven by Charlie Viola. But uh, what drama late on in this race. Let's not forget as well, wherever Linda finishes, she'll also have five seconds added to her time, which might drop her further down the order as well. Definitely, and a big shout out to Lauren Talbot, who inherited second through all that uh, kerfuffle. Yeah, good spot. And Matt good. Butters again on the podium in the, in the lesser modified Pulsar. That wheel seems to be rotating now, but uh, it's certainly got significant damage, hasn't it? As uh, it, she comes around the final corner, Devlin, this is an absolute disaster disappointment despair it's all gone wrong and that she might lose another place on the drag race to the line i'd say that tires down yeah I, I think the tires definitely down but i think there's a uh, more to it than just the tire there she loses the place to lambrick as well as she crosses the line so she's going to finish last of the 10 finishes what an absolute disaster a two minute 47 
on the final lap. I'm trying to work out the points in my head, but I think that, unfortunately, that round victory has slipped through a grasp. I'm, I'm quite so. sore, sure that Harris, the consistent one of the uh, two-litre sports events this weekend, has stolen the round victory.